G'day, I'm Troy, and this is the Comic Book Movie Collector's Guide, the show about collecting all things superhero cinema. And today, we are going to take a gander at The Invincible Iron Man, the 1966 cartoon series on DVD. And we're going to try and answer the question, is this a kid's show or a Cold War propaganda? Ooh, let's get into it. The Invincible Iron Man is an animated superhero cartoon that went for one season, containing 13 episodes, with a runtime of 21 minutes each. The cartoon was part of an umbrella series called The Marvel Superheroes, a half-hour program made up of three seven-minute segments of a single superhero, with a show that also featured cartoons of four other heroes, The Incredible Hulk, Captain America, The Mighty Thor, and The Submariner. It debuted in syndication on US television from the 1st of September 1966 through to the 1st of December 1966. The cartoon was released on DVD as a two disc set only in the UK by Maximum Entertainment on the 21st of May 2007 with no Blu-ray or 4K HD as of this video. The cartoon was produced by Gantry Lawrence Animation and Marvel Comics Group and was distributed by Kransk Films. Okay, let's have a look at the covers now. I've got uh, this two separate DVD set. Now, um, I also have the, uh, the the two disc version up here from the say uh, from Clear Vision, uh, but you could get them these way. And this was the cheaper cheaper version to get, um, as the other one is a little harder to get and more expensive. So uh, when I seen these two for a pretty reasonable price, I decided to grab these instead. Uh, as you can see, very basic. There's nothing much to it. I do like the spines. The spines are good, and the backs well. They're pretty much stock standard as well. And if we have a look at the discs, the disc, as usual, a nice colour disc, which is great, which is pretty much just the cover, and the other one is pretty much the same. Overall, this this isn't as good as, say, the Captain America one we reviewed last week. So, uh, overall, it's good, but it's not, not great. So, for these ones, I am definitely going to give this uh, a 6 out of 10. Now this series uh, is very much a villain of the week show, say similar to the Batman 66 show with little to no continuity story arc throughout it, um, say like Captain America was. I'm not following the story arc here. It almost always goes with a new villain, looks to execute their plan for world domination or something of the like, but they have to get rid of Iron Man first before they can make it happen. So Q plan to destroy Iron Man, which of course fails and Iron Man stops the villain's plans, which just like Captain America, it all happens in like the last 30 seconds of the show in a very anticlimactic way. It can't end like this. Now, the one thing I did pick up on throughout all of these stories is there's very much this Cold War propaganda vibe going on with the villains, uh, all being either Chinese, Russian, or of like communist background or ideology. And the capitalist genius that is Tony Stark is here to save the free world for truth, justice, and the American way. Yay, capitalism. <laughs> but this was the 60s and the Cold War was very much in the forefront of people's minds at that time. So it's not hard to see why these themes sort of ended up in these stories. So I would say very formulaic through the episodes with not much to write home about at times. And look, that's why I'm only going to give this a 16 out of 30. As I mentioned before in my previous video about the Captain America series, the stories and the artwork were all lifted straight from the comic books. But I do feel, look, in this cartoon, there might be a slightly better continuity of artwork as they weren't using the same shots over and over and over again. And there seemed to be a little more animation as well, which I felt gave the show a better feel and a better pace to it. It's definitely an improvement. Now for me, I noticed one thing straight away, and that is Tony Stark look a hell of a lot like the Australian actor Errol Flynn. So I thought, to Google, 
and to see if this was true. And bugger me dead, there was articles out there saying that Stan Lee has pretty much said on record that, yep, that's exactly what we did. We based Tony Stark off Errol Flynn. Because I tell you what, if you look at those pictures and you look at Errol Flynn, they look exactly the same. Boy, the resemblance is uncanny. And of course, let's not forget the voice work talents of John Vernon as Iron Man. He was great. He just sort of rounded out the character nicely, which I think is, he, he's kind of like, for me, he's one of the best renditions I've seen up on screen. And I know Robert Downey Jr. is the best, but uh, for me, as far as animation goes, this one is pretty good. One of the best, maybe the best. Overall, not a bad job at all. So for me, look, I'm going to give this a 15 out of 20. So, as you can see, no special features, which is the norm for these releases, uh, which is a shame. Uh, but unlike the Captain America one, uh, where there is a video out on YouTube you can watch, there is nothing out there about the Iron Man show, which is a bit of a surprise. So anyway, as this is about the DVDs and there's nothing else I can recommend to you, I'm going to have to give this a zero out of 10. Now, the critic score came in at, well, 0% and the audience score was, well, what do you know? 0%. As usual, Rotten Tomatoes comes in with an empty bag. What do you mean empty? Empty. Anyway, but IMDB to the rescue and they had a score of 6.6 .6 out of 10 which is only a smidge higher than the Captain America show which I am a little surprised with as this was a better show than Captain America but it is what it is anyway if we round it up we are going to get a score of 7 out of 10 so for me I remember watching this as reruns on early Saturday morning TV before all the new cartoons like He-Man, Transformers and Thundercats came on. You are old. Even though they weren't up to the same standard of animation, I still enjoyed watching them as, as a young kid. But like all of these cartoons, when you see them now as an adult, you see other things in the stories that you just didn't notice before. Like uh, the before mentioned Cold War overtones to the uh, stories. In Here's one thing I didn't even notice before. A love triangle between Tony, Pepper and Happy. That was out of the blue. And then not to mention, God, how much of a dick was Tony at times? You shouldn't be such a dick, dude. But it still hit all the nostalgia feels for me, for sure. And I did really enjoy watching this one, probably more so than Captain America. Now, in my last video, we have the same problem with the DVD release, with the episodes being out of place on the DVD as opposed to the order they were shown on TV. And as you can see, what a bloody shambles that was. These are all over the shop on this one, which doesn't help to keep any continuity to the story, that's for sure. Anyway, it was great to watch again, and sure, it was better than Captain America, that's for sure. So with that, I'm going to give this a 15 out of 20. So first up is collectability. Now if we look on the collector scale, I would say this would be for your comic book geek and up, as this is really only something for your series collectors or for someone with a bit of nostalgia value. Now, as far as availability goes, this one is on the rare side of things. Even though this is probably le uh, slightly less common than Captain America, but just a little more common than the other three shows as there was not too many copies out there for sale as of this video so look you will really have to track them down on the second hand market as far as your average price goes you are looking at anywhere between or oh, about $70 for the cheapest one all the way up through to the high end at 160 bucks for DVD so as I've said before it pays to search around and as usual nothing for blu-ray or 4k HD as of this video now, for the final score, we get a grand total of 59 out of 100. That's not too bad at all for this card, as this was one of the better ones. So, we ask the question, is this a kid show or Cold War propaganda? I think it was both a Cold War propaganda kids card to remind your children that truth and justice of capitalism is always going to win over the evil empire of communism. And that's nothing but pure and simple old-fashioned communism. So if you like this video and you want to see some more reviews, I've got some for you right here. 
or maybe you want to see some of my collection updates i've got you covered too go check out that one there and of course don't forget to do the most important thing and why don't you throw me a bat like and hit that little subscription button too thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time